Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got our brand new fantasy sets for the month as the 94s all came out for Mark Stone, Couturier, the 93 Makar, and the 92 Best. So we're going to break all that down because that drastically changed the market on some things. We also got two new style icons cards and they're both very, very good. So we got to break those down as usual. All right, guys, so let's get into the content. All right, we'll kick things off with the 90 Dylan Larkin, 6'1", 198, with two to Barrage and two to Magician. This is honestly a phenomenal card. Um, if anyone if anyone plays the game and, say, you had a hard time using someone like Lindros or those big guys, you found them really slow and sluggish at center, and you just can't use them, your play style doesn't dictate that, this is the perfect card for you then. Uh, two to Barrage is obviously nice if you can get that activated. Two to Magician on this card uh, is really good because it'll add, basically max out all of the L2 and stuff that you can do, combining that with the fact that he's got 92 speed before Distributor, 94 acceleration before Spark. His shot, a little bit left to be desired in terms of uh, you know, 90 overall cards right now. But if you can get Barrage activated, obviously that really helps. Uh, defensively, he's got 91 face-offs, which is huge, obviously. Anything over 90 is really valuable. 93 stick checking, 92 defensive awareness. He's not going to be someone that can go around and crush people with only 87 body checking. But again, if your play style isn't about, or, you know, isn't doesn't allow you to use those big, slow guys that, you know, can bump guys off the puck defensively, this is going to be a really good option for you. So be on the lookout. This is a really good card. It just came out. We'll take a look at the auction house if there is any up. Um, so 250 right now. That's about right, honestly. I'd much rather have this card than, say, Marcel Nobles. Um, but it's close. But nonetheless, his speed is going to make him really valuable. You could even play him on the wing. But not a lot of people are going to have four cards that have better face-offs than him. But uh, nonetheless, a very, very good card. If he drops to, like, the low 200s, um, that's even better. So watch out for this one. Great card. And then next, we got the 92 Anze Kopitar. Two to Spark, two to Passing Playmaker. This is basically... Uh, the light version of Austin Matthews, the master item. So six foot three, two twenty five, roughly the same size in terms of Austin Matthews, a little bit thicker. Um, 90, 86 speed, uh, so that's a little bit low. But with distributor, obviously up to eighty nine, does have ninety three faceoffs, and this is a really good card for anyone that can like that likes those big or slow uh, defensive centers. In my opinion, I think that they are far better than anyone that's just speedy and fast, but again, it's all going to come down to play style. Uh, in the defensive zone, this is a monster card. He has been great all year long, um, but the speed obviously is a little low, so that does cut into his value a little bit, but his body checking is almost perfect. Hand stats are in the mid-90s. Shot is in the mid-90s. This is a really good card all the way around, and uh, you know, nothing really changes here. The only thing is, obviously, two to passing playmaker isn't anything special, but if you can get it activated, it just makes that, the card that much better um, for sure. So, uh, great card in Anze Kopitar. We'll see what he's going for. I would guess about 300. Wow, 500. Yeah, again, guys, the guys with size are going to be a lot more expensive. So, uh, wait for that price to come down just a little bit because I think the Matthews cuts into that eventually. But, uh, yeah, a very, very good card. All right, now let's take a look at the new fantasy items. As everyone's pretty, pretty much everyone's got Sean Couturier, two to Spark, two to Howitzer. So, he does get his double to Howitzer, which obviously just improves it more. It opens up another synergy spot. 92 speed before distributor. Um, he's got basically, you know, max agility if you have swarm his shot is phenomenal his hand stats are in the high to mid 90s body checking is almost maxed face-offs are 96 guys like i said anyone that asked me a question in terms of team builder if you don't have sean couturier that is going to be the only option because he is the best center in the game and he will remain the best center in the game because of his synergy combo his face-off rating and his size so uh, phenomenal card. His 93 was electric he's been the best center for me since he's come out and none of this changes then we've got the 94 Mark Stone, two to distributor, two to wingman. Nothing really changes here, in my opinion. Like, he's great in terms of size. Wingers, I just, this card has not gotten a good rap because um, while his synergy combo is great in terms of helping your team, just slower wingers, it's not nearly as valuable. You don't get that push. You don't get that fast break up the ice as much. But his shot is perfect. Uh, defensively, he's great. Body checking's high. In his own zone, he is just going to be a force. And if you are someone who cycles the puck down low, a uh, phenomenal card. If you're someone who liked the Winter National Line A, then you should try and make Mark Stone because he's only going to get better as his speed goes up a little bit more. So phenomenal card. It's just I think that there are cheaper and better options right now. 
Then we've got the 93 Kale Makar, two to Barrage and one to shut down. Again, if you were trying to activate Barrage, this is a great card. But nonetheless, even though he is smaller, he's got that 94 body checking with shutdown uh, before any other team-based synergy. And then his speed is almost max. So um, always going to have value, even if he's only 5'11". An incredible card. And next month, he's going to be almost perfect. So um, if you are someone who has been working on Kale Makar, that's great. I would keep doing it um, as, you know, he's just going to get better. I've said this all the way around. Free-to-play players, you should have all four of these cards. The Besser, the Makar, Stone, and Couture. They're just, you upgrade them at your own time. You don't need to buy into, um, you know, whatever the new hotness is, because as this goes along, this, these cards are just going to be that much better. But um, I think everyone should have a card like Hale Makar on their back end, because being able to break the puck out fast or being able to get back um, is, is really valuable. Obviously, bigger defensemen have much more value in the defensive zone, but having a card like this is just very, very good. And then we've got the 92 Brock Besser, two to balanced, one to speedster, doesn't get that double speedster yet. Um, but nonetheless, this is a very, very good cheap winger option. The two to balance is obviously kind of meh, um, just because of the other synergies that are available. But any card that has 93 speed before distributor with a 99 wrist shot uh, power and 98 accuracy is needed. Like, this is basically um, the light version of Guy Lafleur. And just, that just goes to show you how good Guy Lafleur is, even at 88. Um, for sure. Everyone should be getting this card if you don't have, um, you know, the the god squad on the right-hand side. There's so many good right-handed wingers. That's the only downfall of this card. Like, currently on my team, I've got the 88 Lafleur. I've got the 91 Mario Lemieux, I've got Team of the Year Pasternak, Pasternak, and I've got the 93 Stamkos. Outside of that, like, Panarin would be up there, as would the Kessel, but after that, it's the Brock Besser, and he's so cheap to make, so um, keep that in mind. Great card for anyone that's free to play, and once he gets his two to speeds, they're just that much better. All right, now we have to talk about the sets, because they change the market drastically here. Um, so Sean Couturier, for example, if you go all the way down to the end, they've changed things up as you now need uh, 26 jerseys, I believe, 25 gold jerseys, okay? And they are going for quite a bit, guys. Um, I would check on the auction house as of right now. Um, before I ended my stream, I was selling them for $1,000 a piece. Now, obviously, that's going to drop because everyone is selling jerseys, but still right now they're going for like $750. In my opinion, sell all your jerseys after you make this card. Don't wait just because everyone has gold jerseys. Everyone hoarded them, um, but they're just going to flood the market. So uh, it will crash, but you can make a lot of coins if you sell them for $750 each, um, and it's very easy. to. So it also requires two gold collectibles. Keep that in mind, but it's obviously a much better way uh, than the one player that you need that gets gated. Also, Philip Myers is um, able to be um, acquired in weekly challenges as well, so no longer are you gated on the uh, Sean Couturier, which is a great change. So moving on to Mark Stone, the exact same thing. So all gold jerseys, the two gold collectibles, nothing really changes here for Mark Stone. However, it's Besser and Makar that you got to be on the lookout for because I have a feeling these are going to be the more expensive ones. So if you go down to Makar, uh, things change a little bit here as it requires silver jerseys. So be on the lookout for those as well. And again, make the, make the card and then sell all the remaining ones. Don't hoard them and wait, guys, um, because there's so many jerseys that get pulled that it, the supply will end up meeting the demand. But right now, because it's the new hotness, the first day of the month, everyone wants their cards, so just be on the lookout for that. So sell all your jerseys after you've made the Makar. Uh, and then lastly, the Besser is probably going to be the most lucrative one um, if you can actually swing it. So if you go to Besser right now, it's going to require... Silver logos. So right now, silver logos, they were going for a ton because there just wasn't that many. We'll take a look at what they're at right now. I was literally selling them for 2K. We'll take a look at 1500 Yeah, so now they're starting to come down in price. I literally, I was literally on my stream just selling them for for, for uh, 2,000 coins a piece. Um, right now, about 1,000. So they are dropping quite a bit in price. But take advantage. Like, even if they're over, like, 300, I would much rather do it once you make it. Um, just sell all the ones you can to make bank, and then uh, there you go. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for today's content. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And please subscribe for daily NHL content. I'll see you next time. Have a good one, boys.